everybody. Welcome back to today's Bible study. I'm your speaker, JTL Mally 9681. And this time we're going to be talking about how uh, to endure persecution. So go ahead and pause the video at your leisure and say a word of prayer before we get started. All right, and the title is Enduring Persecutions. Now, our main scripture is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. And this is the Apostle Paul in his second letter to, to the people. I think, I forget exactly how you pronounce the land there, but they, they are, but the people are called Thessalonians. Paul and Silvanus, which is Silas, and Timothy, and Timothus, which is Timothy, unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to tell you that, yes, I do know that the Hebrew way to say Jesus is Yeshua. And Christ is Hamashiach, or that's as close as I can get to it. And Father is Abba, and we all say Father. And God, this word God here is is a title not a name that's Elohim that's the Hebrew name or the Hebrew word the Hebrew title and yes I do know that now uh, let me make something perfectly clear I've been doing my research as everyone else has, has been doing who does try to do any kind of studying Jesus in Greek is not Jesus it's Jesus not Jesus not Jesus it's Jesus, and it does not mean Hail Zeus. Jesus is Spanish, and that is how you say the English word Jesus in Spanish. And I have looked in, and to say Yeshua in Spanish is the same thing. It's Jesus. So it does not have anything to do with the god Zeus in the Greek mythologies. And the word Lord is not a pagan name or title or word. So let's move on from that. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you brethren as it is meet because that your faith grows exceedingly in the charity which is love of every one of you all towards each other abounds so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God that's all the groups of people who are true in Elohim and his son Yeshua in different areas of the world that's the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Now, let's look at a cross-reference, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So persecution is not done by accident. It comes in the life of a child of God. The church has always succeeded through persecution. The word spreads wider and faster than persecution can move. See, as soon as the persecution moves to another area, no matter how near or far and creates great havoc the word spreads wider and faster upon that persecution or from that persecution towards the persecution and then from it faster than the person and wider than the persecution can move to another area but we have a lot of people who don't truly understand these things and some of them don't want to and feel that they're saved no matter what and don't understand what they're even worshiping. And that's where the fail, the fail comes. It's not from the word, it's from people who don't understand. But the word does go and is much greater than the persecution. 
See, Paul, as Saul, when he was a Pharisee, went around and put those who were truly in the church in prison for preaching about Jesus Christ. That's persecution. Saul, who was Paul as a Pharisee, had done that himself. So he knew, he knew exactly what persecution was because he did it. Just as then before Paul was found by Jesus, because we don't find Jesus, Jesus finds us, and turned into a disciple of, Je of Christ, he persecuted Jesus by doing so to the people of the church in Christ's name. That is why Jesus came to Paul and said, why do you persecute me? Because through the people, through the church, Paul was persecuting Christ's name. He was persecuting Jesus, Yeshua. And it is still being done today for Christ's name's sake. So the next part of this comes to fulfilling God's purpose through persecutions. What does all this come down to? Well, let's go into Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 34. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying, and that means fortune telling. That's a devilish thing. It's an evil spirit thing. Don't ever get yourselves involved in something like that. Now, who are these people in the book of Acts? It's Paul and Silas. So the same followed Paul and us and, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the spirit not to the woman but to the spirit I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out that same hour and when her master saw that the hope of their gains because they were using her fortune telling to gain them finances was gone they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate ran off their clothes, and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Now, all of this unlawful things happening, stuff happens like that today to innocent people. Now to the jailer, it probably happened many times that people get thrown into the prison or whatever because they've actually done things that were really, really bad and they did deserve what came to them because they knew better. But poor Paul and Silas didn't do anything wrong. That's the same thing that's happening today. We're not allowed to even mention the name Jesus or God or faith or bless you or anything like that. And then boom, they want to throw us in jail. They want to take us down, face first into the ground, scar us all up, and then say that we were resisting arrest and all this other stuff. And that's pretty much what the law wants to do. And it's wrong. But here's the thing. Same thing happened with Paul and Silas. Now, what do most people do who get themselves into trouble and they get thrown in jail or prison? They complain. And this jailer probably already had already seen that so many times. But what happened with this? At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them, the other prisoners who were already there. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosened. Even the other prisoners' bands were loosened. Now here's something ex really exciting about this. 
And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. Because at the time it was a Roman custom. You would be put to death if your prisoners escaped you. But if you committed suicide, it was a custom thing. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. And Paul was talking about not only himself and Silas, but all of the other prisoners. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved and your house. And they spake unto the, him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and were baptized, he in all his straight way. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Now, what do you think happened with those other prisoners? If they didn't escape and they stayed with Paul and Silas, they also were saved from that moment. Why else would they have stayed like that? Now, with this happening was in Philippi, which was a Roman colony in the leading city in that part of Macedonia. So I just wanted to clear that up of where they were at when all this happened. Now, the woman who was fortune telling the gospel was done by a devil spirit. Our God does not need a devil to do so. Since the Spirit of God through Paul cast the devil out of the woman, Paul and Silas were persecuted and beaten and imprisoned. An unfair act by the law of the land and the people against Jesus Christ. It's not against us, it's against Jesus Christ. Because the people who that woman was a servant of theirs, their finances were gone. And that was the thing. They hated that. So they wanted revenge for that. So they used the act against the act of them being disciples of Jesus Christ to be the unfit, the unlawful act. But it was unfair, unlawful for even the, the magistrates to do what they did. So Paul and Silas praised God and did not complain. Doing so was a testimony to the other prisoners. Now, God blessed them all by loosing their binds and opened the doors. God set them free. The jailer realized that God protected them and he saw that these two men were different and knew that they were truly saved. He then became saved through Paul and Silas within Jesus Christ. See, by disciples of Jesus Christ giving our testimonies people come to us and want to be saved and then that's when we tell them what the truth is you don't you are not saved by us but Jesus will save you through us by giving our testimony and then if you decide yes I want Jesus to save me then that's what the disciples are for to help people see not find Jesus, but see who Jesus is, who Yeshua truly is. And then they speak to Yeshua to save them. And so Yeshua, through his disciples, has done his work there. So salvation to others through our witness. Verses 30 through 32 of Acts chapter 16. That's exactly what that is. And so what is the source of our persecution? Well, we go to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15 through 19. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Busybody is like a gossiper, someone who puts somebody else's business out, out in the open that was none of their business to do so. And people do it constantly. 
Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment might begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So even as Christians, we can get ourselves into trouble. We can still suffer troubles that we had coming to us by causing trouble. This is about Christians who pretty much don't keep their noses clean and don't keep their mouth shut. God disciplines us just as a parent should to his or her children. As Christians who suffer without causing trouble, it is persecution on God's behalf, on Elohim's behalf, if you choose to gossip, kill, steal, cause other kinds of trouble, God will make it possible for you to suffer correction and even punishment for your choice of actions. If you stay with Jesus and live his way, you will still suffer persecution. But for Jesus' name's sake, and your testimony of that will be given to others who Jesus will find who is lost to be saved through you. And this is going to be the final stretch here. What to do while going through persecutions in Romans chapter 12, verse 10 through 14. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. So, always have family affection to others, not just to your blood. Love others in faith. Put others before yourself. Never be selfish. Don't think of yourself first. Jesus didn't do that. Do not be lazy in serving God. Be excited to serve God. Be happy for what God has given you. Be patient through troubles, that's persecutions and all of that. Always pray because prayer is very powerful. Share with other believers who need help. Look for non-believers who need help and welcome them into your home. Always bless those who mistreat you and pray for them to be forgiven and bless them to turn to Christ. This is all in a nutshell of how you endure persecution and what all of this comes out to. And that's going to be about it for this one, folks. This is JTML9681. I hope this, you tune in in my next Bible study. And as for this Bible study, I bear this in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.